Welcome to America's Premier Experts. I'm Jess Todd Feld, your host. We've all been told you don't get any second chances. But our next guest says it's not the case. He's Bill Yamansky. He is an author, motivator, and trial lawyer. Thanks for being here. Thanks, Jess, for having me here. So what are you talking about, second chances? Uh, you know, most trial lawyers, they deal with the legal problem. And having done criminal and personal injury work for the last 17 years, I realized at some point I wasn't satisfied with just the victories in court. In fact, maybe a stereotype, the thought is, you're in it for the money, you're going to help people, see you later, nice life. But you, you have been gaining attention because there's a whole other component that you realize people are not paying attention to. Well, you know, it came from a culmination of trying so many cases over the years. I'll give you an example. As a criminal defense attorney, I would go to court with the person charged with DUI, drugs, or prostitution, whatever the case may be. I'd win, and the person would go back and do the same exact behavior. And, you know, there, was, there wasn't a, a feel-good component of that. You know, maybe yeah. I made more money the next time around, but I didn't feel good that I was helping society or right. even the client. So it was pretty troubling for you, it was, it, was, it, was, it was very troubling for me. And before I ask you what it is you did to make some real change, help people give them that second chance, I just want to bring up, you have a pretty interesting personal story yourself. Maybe yeah. been some second chances in there. You didn't just come from a family where they did everything for you. What happened? No, I mean, I grew up, and like many other Americans, uh, divorce was prominent in my family. I mean, my dad left my mom at an early age, and I started going down the wrong path when I was about 13 or 14. I mean, I did drugs, drove drunk, was a hellion, got kicked out of three different schools, and it, it was very, very difficult period of time in my life is filled with self-loathing and hatred. You could have been the person that you now represent. Man, I could have been in help. prison or jail numerous of times, right. numerous times. And you were able to make a complete change, obviously, get to where you are right now. But I guess that's also helped you realize that these people need a second chance. Well, Jess, it was very important because as I grew up and my dad left, I had a lot of anger towards my mother and my father. I thought my mother, the reason my dad left was my mother was overweight. I thought my dad was just a, a, a jerk, a, a complete, utter jerk for leaving me. And I was filled with hatred towards my mother and my father. And it was difficult because I then internalized that hate to myself. And that hatred, that self-loathing caused me to engage in those kind of behaviors that I find that many of my clients engage in. So you saw a piece of yourself in the people that you were helping it's just that he weren't able to get to where you were able to get to. Man, you know, yet everyone makes mistakes. Yeah. And it's funny, because in our society, we like to judge. And I'm not a religious man, but they say that the only person that should judge is God. And so when my clients come to me, and they've committed these crimes, and some yeah. of them are minor, but they're still mistakes, who are we to judge, Jess? We all have our own sins and to cross to bear. And you heard that phrase many times, oh, well, I guess there's no second chances. I'm going to be branded with this my whole entire life. And then you turned to them and said, no, it's not the case. No, you know, that, that's true. And, and I can only tell you that at the point in my life where I forgave my mom, forgave my dad, and more importantly, forgave myself, yeah. was where I was able to get my own act together. So when clients come to me with these problems, I'm not just addressing the legal problem. I mean, just they need yeah. help. And if I can get them out of it, I'm the guy that's going to do it for them. But that's just the legal component. Yeah. For instance, a doctor gave, came into my office one day with his son, was charged with cocaine possession. And he said, Bill, what can you do to help my son? He, he's, gonna, he's gone to Harvard, and I need him to get out of this situation. You know, it was tough. But I helped him. There was a legal issue. We got the case suppressed because of illegal police conduct. Yeah. But I also turned around, Jess, and spoke to the dad plainly and the son and said, you need help. Because no matter that we got you out of this legal problem, you got a drug problem. Yeah. And it's going to follow you around. So we got him the resources to help him. The government didn't get involved. And I'm not a big proponent of government involvement. But we got him the help he needed. And I still get letters from dad and the son now. And he's a yeah. very successful trial lawyer here in the local area. He ended up becoming a trial lawyer. Absolutely. Maybe a little influence there. I feel a little old yeah, now. Yeah. But yeah, <laughs> he's come around. And he's a trial lawyer in my, my, our hometown of Orlando. Now, and this is the way you've been approaching all these clients that, that you work with and other folks trying to help them get second chances. And I don't know this thing. I know that people have been approaching you. I don't know if it's turning into a book, a reality show, or what's next. You seem to be more concerned with the people that you're working with making that big change. Right. I, you know, right now I'm not interested in, in making money off of a second chance. What I'm trying to get out is get to the schools, talk to people, 
and get out there to explain to people that everyone deserves a second chance. Yeah. There's another interesting component because I do trial work for yeah. people that are injured. And you know, it's interesting because most people hate trial lawyers, they call us ambulance chasers. Yeah. And because the, the idea being that all we do it is for the money. Right. Well, I can tell you that having won numerous trials, settled many cases, and having clients get money, Jess, yeah. the money is fleeting. The money lasts only that long, and right. the clients are never happy because they have this victim personality. Right, right. And I had that same personality right. growing up. Oh, my dad left. Oh, I'm not rich enough. Oh, I can't do this. And you know, you get stuck in that quagmire. So when a client comes in our office, yeah. not only are we going to try to get them compensation, but I want to hit at the core root of their problem, which is they blame other people for their situations, Jess. This is my favorite part, having met you now. Th this guy does not have a filter when it t comes to working with these people. You stop and you just tell them straight out. You, you turn into, I don't know if you turn into Dr. Phil or Simon uh, Cowell or Jess, what, but it, you tell them they gotta get their life on yeah. track and it's beyond what they would have expected when they walked in and saw you. Well, Jess, it may not get me cases by sitting yeah. here and telling you this, but if I have a client that gets in a horrible car accident, yeah. but they happen to be 350 pounds, yeah. and perhaps part of the injury is related to the accident, yeah. but I have a treating surgeon who's saying, I can't do the operation because your client needs to lose weight. So the client comes to me and says, I need this, I was in an accident, my whole life is over, I need help, but the doctor won't do surgery. You know what I tell that client? What do you say? If the client told you to lose weight, why don't you get into a constructive exercise program and help yourself? Because no matter how much money I get you, no matter how I settle this case or we try this case, you will still not be the same person unless you get help for yourself. You make your own life better, you take charge of your own life. Right. And I know, you, I know you're being modest now because you, really, you, you tell them straight out and you're really tough with them and you say, you have to make this change now or your life is going in the wrong direction. Well, to the point that, that you've been able to motivate these people to really do some of the right things. Well, because not only do the right thing, but to change their entire perception of how they look at things. Instead of, it's happened to me, they take charge of their own life. So for instance, in that case, yeah. she actually followed my advice. She wasn't happy about it. She, the first time she wanted to fire me as an attorney. But she actually got on an exercise program, she lost the weight, and she didn't end up needing the surgery. And you know what? Yeah. That case didn't settle for as much as she thought it was, yeah. but her whole entire life transformed. Wow. And she became happier in her job, happier in her marriage, and happier with her children. So at much these more moments... I'm uh, just, let me yeah, cut you off yeah. for a second. Much more satisfying to me yeah. than actually have gotten a million dollar verdict was actually watching her transform into a more right. positive person. So was it at these moments where you said to yourself, this is what I'm doing, this is my real purpose, is this your, your mission, your mission statement, yeah. you need to go out there and create second chances for people? Yes, you know, don't get me wrong, yeah. I'm still an aggressive trial lawyer. Yes. And I love trying he's cases. He's a tough guy. I mean, no. I've heard him talking to people. He's, uh, he's tough, but you, yeah. No, I, I want to yeah. get them money, yeah. and I want to get their charges right. dismissed if I can, but that's not Doesn't what end. personally satisfies me, no. Right. If the clients walk away feeling better about themselves, yeah. then I feel like I've done my job. And tell us what, uh, about one of the other folks that you've been able to help. I, I know we have just a, a short little bit of time left. You mean, uh, in what arena? Just. Just I, you have such amazing stories. When I've heard you talk about the, the two two types of folks that you talk about just now. Yeah, yeah, you know I don't like talking about clients so much because I'm in a different phase of my life and yeah. I'm not really here to kind of tell you what you I've done you. for individuals. What I have done is I started a nonprofit organization, and it's called the Second Chance Foundation of Florida dot com. And what we're doing is we're looking for stories for people to help that really need a second chance. Mm. So for instance, right now we have a pilot program in the Orange County school system where we're looking, and if your viewers are watching this, we're looking for kids who've got straight A's who have a parent in prison. And what we really? like to try to do is raise scholarship money for that child because I believe that is the perfect example of someone who needs a second chance. And I bet there are more kids like that than we realize. Um, it's unfortunate because we like to label the kids of criminals criminals, but there right. are actually some hardworking mothers that have the husband in prison who are still trying to do what's best and right for their children, and yeah. their children are still succeeding. And the website or sites or what? Well, if you've been arrested or charged with a crime, I'd ask that you check out thelawman.net 
And on that site, not only will we get legal strategy, strategies on how to handle your case, yeah. but it will talk about substance abuse programs, uh, tutoring programs, and other things along with that second chance philosophy. And if you've been in a, uh, in a car accident or been hurt through the negligence of someone else, yeah, yeah. check out thelawman.com. It's the same thing. We not only give you legal strategies on how to handle your case or how we can handle it for you, but it also talks about how to transform your life from a victim to a person in charge, Jess. Bill Umansky is a guy who's out there, the real personal story, you're the real deal, and it's just a pleasure for us to have you on. The reason why we had you on is because you're doing what the other people aren't doing and need to do. Thanks for being here oh, today. Thank you very much, Jess. I appreciate it. Thank you.